In recent reporting, author Michael Schellenberger writes that multiple sources have confirmed whistleblower David Grush's claim that the United States government possesses a number of non-human vehicles. These sources are, quote, either high-ranking intelligence officials, former intelligence officials, or individuals who could be verified as being involved in the United States government UAP efforts for three or more decades, according to his reporting. Schellenberger writes that the individuals said they had seen or been presented with, quote, credible and verifiable evidence that the U.S. government and U.S. military contractors possess at least 12 or more alien spacecraft, some of which they shared with AARO or the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, quote, which AARO has refused to provide Congress. The office reportedly said it has not discovered any verifiable information and, quote, because it does not have the authority to verify it and may not want to verify it. Joining us now to discuss is Twitter Files author and author of Apocalypse Never, Michael Schellenberger. Thank you for being with us, Michael. Good to be with you. So, confirmation, aliens are real. This is exciting. What do you make of the baker's dozen of alien spacecraft that we have? Well, I think it's it's worth just pointing out that this is very shocking. Uh, the whistleblower in question, David Grush, used a term ontological shock, which is a little bit of jargon, but what he means is that the idea that we are not alone um, in the abstract is something that everybody, I mean, not everybody, but many people, of that, the large majority of people agree with that we are um, almost certainly not alone in the universe. However, the idea that there may already be contact or have been contact for quite a while between the U.S. military and non-human intelligence, non-human life forms is very shocking. And it's shocking for me personally. There's things I kept out of the story that I think we're just too shocking and, and certainly harder to confirm. And it, but I do think it's clear that the conversation about this has progressed from the idea that the Pentagon simply has some videos to uh, a, lar a large and growing number of people with reason to know who say that in fact there are non-human spacecraft. That is very intriguing that there's things that you left out of the story. I hope that you'll continue to investigate them. I'm wondering how exactly these sources determined that these crafts were non-human. Was it the material they were made out of, the, the method of construction? How exactly did they make that uh, determination? Yeah, I mean, I think that there wasn't, honestly, there wasn't much doubt. These are, there are programs, according to these folks, that exist to not just study these technologies, but attempt to reverse engineer them. There was some, uh, I don't know, disagreement or different levels of knowledge about the success in that. Certainly the idea had been that there was efforts to try to operate these craft or reverse engineers to create them. There's one very interesting story, which is that a major aerospace company apparently tried to involve greater civilian scientists and engineers to reverse engineer the vehicles because the stove piping or compartmentalization that exists really prevents the kind of innovation and sharing of knowledge that's actually essential to being able to achieve scientific and engineering goals. And so there was a, a very briefly floated idea to involve a larger number of scientists and engineers that was apparently rejected by the Pentagon. So these are, look, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. At the same time, extraordinary claims, uh, you don't need extraordinary evidence to simply investigate them. And the claim here is that these craft are real physical objects. This is not a mass hallucination, that they exist in specific military bases and or in or in contractor facilities and that that members of Congress could go and actually find these facilities or go and actually make sure they get their way in there and um, uh, and, and try to find these craft themselves. So obviously this is amazing that we have the craft at all, but I can't help but wonder were there pilots of the craft? Do we know anything about that? Is there anything you can say to that effect? 
David, so David Grush, the whistleblower, did say on News Nation that there were, in some cases, non-human pilots. What? Uh, I did have <laughs> confirmation of that from one of my sources. I kept it out of the story in part because it was one source, and also I, I felt like I, I really wanted to establish that there is strong evidence that there are craft and I didn't want to get too much into what I had been told about the the different potential of, of there being beings. Um, it's a lot of ontological shock with just the craft and I felt like let's just give this a minute and let's spend a little bit more time doing this reporting. I would also say I'm not the only person that's interviewing these folks. There are other people in my article I mentioned, uh, former defense uh, Assistant Defense Secretary Christopher Mellon uh, mentioned at least four witnesses. I think he said in his article in Politico, over four people. I don't know if those are the same people I spoke to. Uh, we don't share information with each other, but there, there's more people that are finding the courage to speak. They're very scared. They don't want to lose security clearance, and they're also worried about retaliation. And David Grush, as you know, the whistleblower, felt like he needed to go to Congress because he was subject to retaliation. I actually have chills right now hearing that there were potentially non-human pilots that were recovered along with the craft. That suggests to me that these were craft that crashed in some way, and that's how the U.S. military was able to recover them. Is that correct? Well, actually, that's um, that, that there is there are cases of that. There are people that say that there were crashes. There's also uh, cases of what they, they call this a, a retrieval program. There's also cases I was told of craft being abandoned and craft making its way into U.S. military hands in other ways. And so I think that it's not just that there is crash evidence, but there's also other mechanisms in which these craft have been obtained by the U.S. military. So it sounds like, from what you're saying, your contacts are based in the United States. You've talked to military officials, people in the intelligence community in the United States. This figure, 12 or more, is specific to the crafts obtained by the U.S. military. Do we know anything more about potential crafts or pilots globally? Uh, well, Grush, the whistleblower, said in his statements that there is competition between the United States, China, and Russia in terms of developing reverse reverse engineering these technologies. I, I should say that was not something I was able to confirm. Um, and it wasn't that uh, people disconfirmed it or denied it. It was just that the people I spoke to did not know that if Russia or China had these technologies or similar craft. I would also say just uh, on, a, on a personal level, I feel comfortable doing this story in part because of Grush's whistleblower testimony, like the people I interviewed, I felt like somebody needed to kind of speak up and say that what he's saying is not unusual, that you can find a fair amount of people that will talk about this off the record, or in our, in my case, not for attribution. I will say, uh, I haven't written any commentary about the piece itself. I am planning on writing more about it, but I have actually been in interviewing people for several years and only felt comfortable at this point, and in part, I felt obliged to share this research and to go back to folks. But I've been talking to folks for a long time, in part because you may know I have spent a long time working on nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is a dual use technology. And it was actually in that work that I started to come across a lot of evidence of UFOs or what have been rebranded uh, UAPs but a significant amount of interaction of these UAPs and UFOs, including when the most famous alleged crash in history occurred around uh, nuclear weapons test sites and also nuclear weapon sites. Is there any connection, Michael, between this existence of the UFOs or the non-human entities and nuclear research? There's definitely something going on that I certainly don't entirely understand. There's, in fact, a large, there's a major book. I've interviewed the author of it called UFOs and Nukes that describes many cases of anomalous UFO activity around nuclear weapons 
sites, but there's also been significant UFO sightings and reports around nuclear power plants. This, the nature of those interactions suggests that whatever is behind those craft is expressing some concern around these sites. I, I'm, I'm very reluctant to get too far into it, because, in part because I'm a, a big supporter of nuclear energy. I think it's the only way to really address climate change and other important environmental issues. So, but nonetheless, nuclear obviously is a, you know, as a weapon is a very powerful and potentially dangerous technology. And so it does seem like there is something big going on there. And, and I would just note, you know, we have civilian control of our military in the United States. And I've now, we've now done stories on FBI whistleblowers, and we're very concerned about the role of the intelligence community in encouraging censorship by social media platforms. And for me, even though I have been looking at this particular issue for a long time, we have a situation here where we have a very important whistleblower who the intelligence community's inspector general said has credible and urgent information. We have the DOD's special department on this, which is called Arrow. In April, the director of that program said that there was no credible evidence. The inspector general contradicted that that now the DOD spokesperson told us and others that there's no verifiable evidence. However, this evidence does appear to be verifiable. You need to go into these facilities and look for these craft. It's not, it's, I mean, I think there may be resistance, but again, we have civilian control over our militaries. And I think there needs to be a very clear statement from members of Congress, particularly Senators Rubio and Gillibrand that this is not up to the military to decide what to withhold from us. This is the right of the American people to know what our tax dollars and what our militaries are doing. And if there has been some bad behavior, we know there's been cover-ups. And by the way, I, I will point out, you know, there's this is a New York Times story from 1978, New York Times Magazine story about Pentagon covering up of UFO information. So for me, if there's nothing there, and we should keep an open mind that maybe there is nothing there, we could keep an open mind on both levels, the military needs to open up. It's way past time for this. It's civilian control of our military and intelligence services. And I'm afraid that we're not seeing uh, the levels of disclosure that I think that we deserve to see. This is It is ontological shock, but I do think we, we are grownups and we're capable of dealing with whatever the truth may be. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. This is in the public interest. So thank you so much for joining us, Michael Schellenberger, and congratulations on the good reporting. Thank you for having me.